Welcome back. Uh, we're going to play week 53. Now note, there are only 52 weeks in the year. So we're playing week 53 of the Shogi Teaching Ladder, which commemorates our one-year success of teaching many players. Um, each time we play a game, afterward we review the game, and we seek to learn things together. It's a great, wonderful teaching opportunity. Good luck. Okay. Oh, my sound is a bit faint. Let me turn it up just a notch here. I'm going to offer Bishop Exchange. Um, now, I almost always follow this by closing the diagonal and playing either Opposing Rook or Fourth Foul Rook. Um, let's see. So I still see this pawn here is a target. I can snipe at. Hmm. I'm not sure where I want my rook to go. So I'll ask my opponent if he's going to push one of these pawns. Instead, he counters by this, indicating that Anaguma is not going to occur this opening. Anaguma being where you tuck your king in the corner, put a lance in front of it, and surround the king with all your generals. So that's not today's game plan. Um, all right, I'll play another waiting move. So I'm sniping at this pawn. I haven't yet committed to fourth foul rook. I could play third foul or even opposing rook at this point. Um, I'm also going to delay for another move to see if I can get him to select a pawn to push. All right, so he instead pushes the rook pawn, which is quite reasonable. And a reasonable counter for that is using this to prevent the rook from being able to do anything. Um, <laughs> the king steps out of this line of fire in the event that we were to play opposing rook. There's a trick. That trick is no longer available. So... So do we hard commit to fourth foul rook? Because, like, I don't want to play opposing rook anymore without this trick being available. Um. Hmm. Now, this pawn is weak. It would take me one, two, three, four turns to collect it. And I do enjoy putting my rook on the third file. And there's the possibility the third file could open. So... Yeah, let's play another flexible move for now. Uh, this opens the possibility of third foul rook or opposing rook. My opponent creates another target. Um, interesting. They have not moved very many of their generals. So if I go one, two, three, I'm striking at this. It only takes them two turns to defend it, but then they are putting their general at, in front of their bishop. Hmm. On the other hand, my king is a sitting duck in the center of the board. Is this really what I want to be doing? I'm not sure. I think I'll play one more flexible move and ask them, no, really, show me what your strategy is. Uh, building Boat Castle does not seem like a bad idea, but now I'm actually threatening to hit both of these pawns. One way to counter this would be by pushing pawn to 6-6 six, six here, which would block the bishop, which they don't really want to do, but it would be one way to deal with my threat. Um, I am leaving this pawn in a really awkward situation. Long term, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing about that. They could, like, aggressively play the bishop, which would be risky for both of us. They could do that.
Right, check the overlay. Overlay looks fine. So we've both tried to keep very flexible, but they've not made any advance on the third or fourth file. So I'm trying to ask them, like, what's your long-term idea here? Before I commit my rook to a particular file, I'd like to have some idea what you're up to. I could play opposing rook. Um, although it's weakened by the fact that this pawn is now pinned to the bishop. So if we were to like do pawn takes, if I did bishop takes to threaten, bishop takes silver and rook takes rook. Uh, this is weak. This is weak. So I've pushed my silver a bit aggressively here. Um, if my intent is to play third foul rook, and if they push the third foul pawn at some point, I probably do want to play third foul rook. Um, then I could drop the bishop back at some point, but I'll have to figure out what to do about this pawn. But basically, I'm not wanting to commit my rook to a particular file unless I, until I have some idea where their rook is going. I'm trying to win a single move in this opening by not having to move my rook twice. Um, I'm not saying it's a good idea, I'm just saying these are my ideas. All right. So a challenge they're going to face, if I so choose, I could fork both of these pawns with my silver. This would be begging for them to attack me. Um, if I play my silver up, they could play this, either silver to the center. I could take this pawn. They could bring out their knight. They would not have anything that could attack my silver, but my silver would be trapped. And I think I'm okay with that outcome. Um. Hmm. Oh, also, if I bring the silver forward, they could push this pawn. I could take the center pawn. They could start exchanging pieces and making threats. I think that's okay. Let's do it. It's a bit risky, but, you know, where's the fun in playing Shogi without at least some risk? All right, so they've defended the center pawn, uh, but I can still take the pawn that's at the head of their castle. So I see a free pawn, I take a free pawn. It's usually how this goes, and today is no exception. Now I'm debating, do I just play static rook? Like, my rook is lined up toward their castle. I'm not particularly opposed to starting an attack. Um, huh. This is interesting. Well, I can say this. I am very curious to know what happens if I do that. I don't think I could resist. Um, yeah, we're doing it. Okay, here we go. I'm going after your king. What's your plan? I mean, this is super provocative of me, but at this point, I really can't be bothered. Um, 
This king is a really nice target. And I need to know, like, what happens. If they push the pawn, I just keep pushing. Like, there's nothing that can defend this point. Yes, my king is very super exposed in the center of the board, but both of us have a king. Um, I wonder. So, for those unfamiliar, Shogi Harbor uh, is a ladies' professional. Uh, first foreign uh, lady professional that um, now lives in Japan and has for many years and makes a career out of teaching and playing shogi. Um, and she very generously has a Sunday morning program where uh, she analyzes viewer games. Uh, there's extremely good chance I might submit this game for said analysis. Because I'd like to know, am I crazy? Like, this seems very interesting. Um, I want to play accurately if I'm going to submit this. And I think I am playing accurately so far. <sighs> My rook is trapped. All right, so for a while there, I was concerned about a bishop drop here, but I forgot that, like, knight is covering this square. So, yeah, I mean, there is this promotion threat, but I can make promotion threats too. So I think I just need to keep up my attack. But a bishop drop back here... I don't see how they counter it. Ah. So, option one, drop the bishop here on 3-3 three, three was my original idea. They come up with some way to defend this pawn. I guess they bring the rook over. And my attack is a little bit slow here. Um... Hmm. Option two, drop the bishop in front of my center pawn. Threatening silver takes promotion. They hurriedly escape their king back toward the center. And I think they survive that without any difficulties. Um... Oh. Oh, is there Tsuji here? If I push the pawn, pawn takes, pawn drop on 8, 7. I'm threatening rook takes pawn. That doesn't win anything. Hmm... I've played very aggressively this game. Of course, I've looked briefly at silver takes pawn. That doesn't seem to get very far. Silver takes, king takes pawn check. King runs forward. Bishop check. King continues running toward the center of the board. It doesn't seem to get very far. Um, oh, another fun idea is pawn drop right in the middle of their camp. Wait for them to come up with an idea. But they probably drop a bishop in front of this pawn. Um, so that's not quite good. Yeah, so their threat is to drop this bishop here, and then collect my knight. Okay.
This is so complex. I think the only move to hold the position together is this gold advance, which deals with this bishop drop threat. Um, and anything else I could think of. Um, it's not as, it's more flexible than other moves, but it's not as aggressive. And while I want to do something aggressive, I don't see something that just wins. I think this gold move is flexible. I'm not seeing a failing with it. My rook does cover across the rank. Um, yeah, they're preparing an escape hatch for their king. Which sounds reasonable on the surface. Um, I don't think it's as easy as it sounds in practice. Or I don't think in practice it's as easy as it sounds. Let's activate my rook. And another threat is a bishop drop preventing the king from escaping. So the king can run, but then I promote, and um, I'm not sure what happens next. This might be a good opportunity to run, honestly. I don't know that there's going to be a second chance, but... Maybe there is some other way to defend. On the other hand, they spent like two moves running this way. And um, they spent another move shifting the gold sideways so their king could run back. So that's four moves to get the king from here to there. It could be time well spent, maybe. Um, so, the fact that I've not castle doesn't seem like such a problem, given how they've been spending their moves. Uh, the only thing I might question is my pawn advance on the edge here. Um, it seems like a wasted move. But I didn't know that they'd be playing exactly this way. Okay. Okay. Well. Um. That's bold. So I can drop a bishop check, and then I can take this pawn, and I'm threatening checkmate. Um. Is there a downside to this, to quote one Disney villain? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I don't really see a downside to this. I did spend minutes earlier looking at it, so I have to have some confidence in my own uh, reading ability. Well, um, wait, did I read this correctly that, uh, okay, they, they moved the king here, they moved the king here, they shifted the gold over so the king could run away, but then they moved the king over here instead because I forced them to. So they spent some moves getting their king into the line of fire. Um, and the question is if the king survives or not. It's an important question. 
If I take king takes, I promote my rook, the king runs. I take this. This is one way things could go. Um. Oh, I don't have to take this pawn, or this gold directly. I could promote back here. Yeah, there's an indirect way I could do this, and then take this next. Um, interesting. Okay, well, here's an idea. I take the gold, and then rook takes knight. Then I bring up the silver. They don't have a piece. I mean, they have a bishop in hand, but it can't cover both squares, so they'd have to move this. Oh, but this retreat would actually twice defender both of these squares. So my next idea, pawn drop in front of my silver, would not be profitable. Okay. Here, I have an idea to gain one tempo over the entire variation. And that's cement this in the opponent's position before doing anything too aggressive. This is the calm before the storm. If they sacrifice the gold, I take here, promotion, and then I drop this gold mate. So the bishop is immune. But this pawn allows me to have Tsuji in front of the pawn um, once their king starts running. If I had dropped the pawn right there, just rook takes, and if I dropped another pawn, they'd move the rook somewhere. So this is just... I mean, this loses a move as opposed to that double pawn sacrifice, which would happen with gain of tempo. Maybe the pawn drop uh, immediately here. Maybe that would have been the critical blow. I don't know. Maybe I just blew it all. And dropping it on the gold's head directly might have won. Um, instead, I was looking for a way to try to have tactics and gain material back. But honestly, this is a nice thorn in the position. I could drop the rook back. Probably should have dropped the rook back. But there was no immediate motivation to drop it back. Now there is one. That's definitely a motivation to get the rook moving or to do something. Um, I 
Yeah, this is the feeling I've had for several turns now. Um... There's only one move here. And then we defend the head of my king. Once this blocks, bishop takes pawn. All these moves are kind of forced at this point. Which is why I've been spending time on previous moves, thinking. But yeah, we'll probably slide into Bioyomi next move. Well, I'm considering... Okay, I have no choice here, right? I can't allow bishop takes pawn promotion. Very soon I'll slide into Bioyomi and start thinking 60 seconds per move. I'm saving my 11 seconds for now. Because we're going to hit a critical position soon. Bishop drop, gold up. To stop mate in one. Or bishop drop king up. Might be better. But that exposed. Well, this knight's defended, so they can't do bishop takes promotion. Alright, go yummy time. What to do? Mm, what to do? They defended their knight. I have holes in my position, which really need to be mended. Um, this is the hole. My silver would usually go up to mend this. And I think that might not be a bad idea. Silver up somewhere. Okay, we'll prepare the escape hatch and defend against bishop drops. I mean, yes, I've had some my dacking ideas here. I didn't think this would work. It doesn't. Alright, so we retreat. The, rook's gonna, the dragon's going to swing mid-board. Either this way or that way. Because I don't see a finishing blow here. Oh, shit. I forgot. This point could be weak. They could take my lance. Um... Hmm... Problems abound. Yeah. This ain't good. 
This is super not good. All right, well, I'm losing one of my corners to his attack. That's okay. Um, yeah, I could have planned this so much better. Ain't got no choice now. So, yeah, I'm going to get Bishop forked here. And I just need to hold the fort as long as possible. Um, or come up with a counter threat, but I don't see one. Um... Mm -hmm. I deserve that. All right, you get my knight and my lance. It's yours. I always play Swinging Rooks so I don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. And this time we did not play Swinging Rook because our opponent had been generous. So what do we do now? How do you want to attack a position that has no weakness? You create a weakness. All right, how do we do that? We're going to try to hit this lance. It's a long shot, but um, I have to shoot at something. Holding the bishop in hand was not helping me. Uh, incidentally, bishop takes pawns actually a threat. I don't even need to spend time putting a pawn down here. Uh, they drop a bishop when I like take back with the dragon. Um, oh wait, no, 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 no. I'm making stuff up here. Bishop takes is not a real threat. So yeah, just pawn drop, pawn takes. I have threats, after all, somehow. I would have put the bishop back one more square, except then they have both this bishop attacking mine, as well as a knight drop to hit the bishop. So we're playing it up one on the diagonal. The only saving grace here is that they're also event about to enter Byoyomi. So stuff's gonna get wild. Um, but yeah, this has been almost all aggression, very little defense on my part. Just not too different than my other games with this opponent, but um, this time I played Static Rook, so that's a difference.
Oh. Well, we aren't retreating at this point. Ever forward, onward, Excelsior. But we have a pawn that can take care of the knights, so why do that? <laughs> well, because we can't exactly push the pawn to hit the knight, can we? Hmm. Can't exactly do that. Yeah, okay. Guess I'm sacrificing my gold for a knight. The hard way. Unless I have some other way to attack or remove it. That's clever. Yeah, we can't exactly retreat here. Screw it. Fine. I predict a knight move, but I don't think a knight move is best here. I think they need to use their remaining pawn. Well, I don't know. Like, what's this promoted p- Oh, it hits my bishop. That's why I can't ignore it. Okay. That is unfortunate. If I just ignore it, he takes my bishop. I mean, I was going to sack the bishop up here anyway. Seems like a fun time to sack it. I don't want the knight. There we go. Two can play this game. Yeah, whatever. It's just a rook. Um... This is why you don't attack before castling. <laughs> I've got myself in deep, deep doo-doo here. And I'm playing emotionally, but I don't think if I spent more time I could come up with anything better, so we're just going to roll with it. I'm setting such a bad example for other amateur players, but I'm just a bit passionate about this game at the moment. All right, uh, maybe I could find a good move here. Kind of need to. Well, if I go one way, I'm almost certainly mated. So maybe I should go the other way. All right. Uh, if they dropped a rook, I was considering pawn drop to block. That would be Nifu. So I should do something better than pawn drop if they check me. Um, I need the gold for my attack. Because my attack kind of sucks without a gold. Um, oh. Alright. So what do we do now? Hmm. Options are scant because I've made so many mistakes. Well, this is a target. If I try to hit this target, they 
defend it with a horse. Hmm. Okay, I did not hear the Yoyomi count. Sorry about that. I was listening for it, I just did not hear a Byoyomi count. So, um, it's okay. I just need to be careful. Alright, an early escape of the king is worth eight moves, they say. Um, now would be a good time to run. On the, on the other hand, if I give them one more piece, this gets harder to defend. Um, I need to stand my ground for a move. Instead of allowing a gold drop and then gold takes silver. I need this move to stand my ground. I think this slows them down, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, my main attacking idea is to take this knight, since I don't really have anything else here. Oh, I just sped up their attack. Oops. I misread that. Um... Well, it's okay. This is the only way I can attack at this point, so we're gonna do it. It'll be fine. Oh my goodness. I was considering horse takes king up and just thinking they would take here or something. Horse 5-2 is mate. Uh, so I can't retreat this way. So that seals my choice here. I have to retreat this way instead. So my next idea is to promote this pawn, and then hope that I have some way to continue attacking. Another idea I've had is like drop my knight, and the knight takes pawn. Okay. Well, almost everything leads to mate in one, so this decision's kind of... Oh. Oh, that's good. That's clever of him. Yep. <laughs> Just reel it in. This is why you build a castle instead of just allowing everything to collapse. Um... Mm -hmm. All right, there's some mate in one threat. 
Uh, can I do anything about it? Oh, there's multiple mate in one threats here. Uh, none of which I can do anything about. All right, yeah, that'll, that's a good game. Thanks for the game. Woo! Oh, that was something. <laughs> All right, well. Ah. Woo! Yeah, that got sharp. Um, so in this opening, um, we, uh, we were spending a lot of moves back and forth. Ah. Uh, Uh, I didn't castle. Let's give him the hat if he wants to show something. Yeah. I didn't think I needed to castle because my attack looked so overwhelming. But, um, I don't understand how to attack well enough. Yeah, I kept waiting for him to, like, commit to some shape or another before picking where I want to move my rook. Um, so yeah, since I'm not threatening to exchange bishops, you can certainly spend time building whatever castle you want. But moving the king is not super imperative right now. Uh, wait. To play opposing rook or third file or fourth file or central rook. So, like, but you never moved a pawn, so I didn't know where your rook was going. So. Because I couldn't figure out where his rook was going to go, I just decided not to play, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's very tempting. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not a castle remaining by the time I'm playing Abisha. So, I bungled everything, but um, man, I had a really nice attack for a point, for some point there. Uh, I was curious about the bishop drops. It's Jin Jin, but you know, we'll get there in time. So... Uh, I'm hitting this. This is like... <laughs> mm. Mm. In the game it was fine. I don't really see that wall as a weakness here. Uh... I don't think my attack gives mate, in hindsight. Um, I was too curious. <laughs> I had to know, like, if I just completely throw everything into this attack, like, can I checkmate here? Because it really, really looked promising. Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll have to ask.
last Benchogi Sunday. It's something happened. Both of us like played this. Oh. All right. We got the rook to defend. Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the rook defense would have been bright. This pawn move is a bit much. I mean, there is the proverb, push all the odd foul pawns, or push the odd foul pawns. It's the proverb. But in this situation, I'm not so sure. Yeah, like, I'm playing Gota. I should not be playing this aggressively, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I think Senta is doing amazing in this position. Like, what in the world has Gota accomplished? Um, it's really murky. Yeah, that's a very active rook. You have the vanguard pawn. Like, I don't see any advantage to Gota's position here. So that would have been an interesting development. That would have probably more than answered my threat. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so I started to play this. Yep, there's definitely that fork potential here. Um... Well, if I saw you uh, mating me, maybe I would pick something different. Instead of 3 2 gold. Very fast. Yeah, Alexei is trying to chime in and tell us like what we've messed up here. Oh. Well. Um. I'm not sure. What's the deal here? Is this a problem? I like, maybe I meet everything with skepticism, but I think it's okay. What's the problem? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Um. Am I just missing something here? Uh, I'll have to take Alexei's word for it, because he's rated 1749. I, I don't understand this. To me, it looks like this attack has failed. That's why I didn't attack this way. If I thought this attack won, I would have done it. Um, but Alexei's saying, like, you can't defend too far away from the defenders. So it, apparently he thinks Gota wins that. I'm not so convinced. But it's okay. Like, we're not all machines anyway. Um, oh, Let's see, okay. 
Okay, yeah, I guess this is more complicated than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I stand down, so yeah. That attack actually is decently strong. Um... Yeah, 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 that makes sense, so. Wow. I suppose that works. That's kind of amazing that, like, despite having very few pieces attacking, it's still decisive. Because this one gold is loose. But it is, so. That's, yeah. It is what it is. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta run. I was convinced you'd run here. Um, yeah, I was convinced there's like no way that you're sticking around to see my attack, but um, the king wanted to take the scenic route and somehow it worked out. Um, so, yeah, uh, same approach, the opening is the fourth foul rip with five, four silver to counter what white did in this game. And then at this point, I probably probably just switch back to playing third foul rook. That was kind of the idea, is that I wanted to play my rook. I just didn't know where the silver, where everything was going to end up. So I wanted to like see where you would commit your pieces before I play my rook over. Um, okay, kind of attack on the third foul, play six five silver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I expected. What's this third foul counter attack? And I thought I'd be okay. But, um,. Yeah, it's, that's kind of the motif there. Right, so, yeah, anticipating this, yeah. Yeah, instead of playing silver to that center file, you would just, um, yeah, if I played my silver up one more, right. Yeah, so that's why I play this here. But yeah, if I played silver 6-5, this is a strong counterattack. Oh, I miss. Well, oh, did they not have a gold to block with at that time? Okay, that's the mental disconnect I'm making. I kept putting off that move. Um, somehow I thought I need to like play lightly instead of moving my very heavy rook around and chasing their king away for my very strong attack. But no, taking the knight with check actually would have been strong. Or at least it would have been different than the absolute hell that occurred in the game. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a very good point. Um, Thank you. 
have lost my silver uh, general this way before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's quite the learning experience. Yeah. Right, so yeah, usually Gota would not pursue such a ridiculously aggressive attack. Um, oh, hello. Yes, this almost certainly I misplayed something. Yep, yep, yep. And then I should have just taken this. Um, there's no sense holding off on it. But as cute as my pawn drop to Suji is, it's just not effective. Um. I'm not sure how to continue attacking, but something like this, somehow, I don't know. Hmm. There's probably something somewhere. It's just, like, what am I even supposed to consider? Um. Right, if I give up my gold general, I just strengthened his castle. Um. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I want to follow the latest position. Um, so maybe at this point, I don't know, something like this, strike at the expensive part of the castle, see if it moves or not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess we just take it. I don't know, like, my king is such a sitting duck in the center. I can't keep it sitting there forever. Uh, wait, that doesn't work. Um, hmm, I don't know. This is hard. This is super hard. Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely defend it. Well, I'm not even sure about that. I thought I would. It look, still looks like I would, but... Uh, no, that looks fine. It's just this damn weakness right there needs to be repaired somehow. Um... I mean, so yeah, I definitely play this, but 
I don't know really, like... It's a challenging position for both players, I think. From my end, I'm trying to avoid my sitting duck getting checkmated. Um, oh. Well, this is fun, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's cute. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Okay, yeah, I guess I can defend this. Um, let me take that. <laughs> and I have the lance already lined up to try to drop it. It's probably going to 5-5 five five next. And then trying to mate the king in the middle of the board. Um, so, this is not such an easy attack for me to play against his king. He calls this a wall, but his king very easily gets around the wall. And my king definitely is a sitting duck here. My general... Sitting in the corner. He's got a bag of popcorn ready. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you do? It's not super easy. Um. I don't think my attack is so simple here. Uh... So although I think I do have to take the knight, I don't think it leads anywhere too glorious. Um... I, <laughs> uh, I can't even find a next move for Gota here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, this position... <sighs> this position's special. Um... What do we do here? Hang on, hang on. Let me have my fun. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, this... Uh, right, so we have to think of something else here. Um, I mean, this is, like, super murky to me. No, that, that doesn't cut it. Um, what do we do? I don't know. That's kind of amazing. Uh... Yeah, this brings the rook into the line with both kings. Uh, looks uh, exciting. Hell if I know what's going to happen next, but stay tuned for the next episode of Shogi Z. Yeah. Oh boy, that looks so sharp. Yeah, we take this. Uh, well, yeah, any move you come up with 
uh, Senta hits with a really hard counter attack here. I'm not sure Senta sur or Gota survives this all. It's extremely dangerous for both players. Um... <laughs> Humans won't understand this, because, like, we got this thing going on, we got this thing going on, we got this threat, and then, like, in the midst of all of this, somehow this bishop's going to end up there. It's just too much. There's no freaking way that, like, it would take me maybe an hour to figure out what's going on. It's very complicated. And this is all presuming that both players proceed exactly this way. Um, so I would back up a few moves here. The one thing that had me questioning this is that bishop drop. Yeah, maybe not the bishop drop. Feels like there's got to be some other way to proceed here. But still. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, that's actually much more direct, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Kind of like that. Oh, he's just saying that that's a weakness. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, while it's still there, it's a weakness. When it's gone, there's nothing weak left to defend there anymore. So I misinterpreted as Q, but I think this could be interesting. Um, I think eventually my attack uh, runs out. So... Pretty sure that... Um, Senta has a very strong attack somehow here, even though if I'm not exactly sure about the specifics of it, there's got to be something with this bishop drop. So, I mean, yeah, I did miss the free knight earlier. This could have been much more complicated than the actual game, where I just kind of fell over. But, um, yeah. Ah. Uh. Either way, in the game, I didn't take the uh, knight and lost, so I need to try something like this. Um, but I'm not so optimistic about my chances here. I misplayed my attack somewhere, and... I won't be able to figure this out. It's too complicated. I've made a game that's above my skill level. And really the solution is, I should just take like one or two moves in the opening and try to like secure my king somewhere. Like I keep telling everybody else to do. I don't follow my own advice. So, um, leads to awkward post-game discussion when I say, oh, well I guess I just didn't defend. Yeah. Uh, for the game. Hmm. Is there anything else? Um, let's 
say, did this bishop drop? Oh, well, it's quite similar. Is there anything else that we'd like to look at? Um, I mean, I have some ideas about this. Yeah, as opposed to like that. I don't know. Um, I wonder where this goes next. Oh, this is interesting too. Hmm. Man, I missed some things this game. <laughs> this could have been interesting. Huh. That bishop drop is so lethal, and I'm doing absolutely nothing about it. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Um... So, I played this gold move to try to defend things. It did not work out anywhere near how we hoped. Um, yeah, maybe I have this or something. Oh, the silver sack was devastating. That's right. Cool. Yeah. What an exciting game. I got too curious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll have to practice with this. Cause that, that seems hard, but it's good to know that this is just so strong. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Yeah, so... I know they got other ladder games to play after Jin has lunch or something. Yep. Cool. Uh, yep, yep. That's cool. So how how do these shortcuts work? Like this arigato gajashma such interesting. Um so yeah, I'm still not fully convinced, even though both Alexei and Foradun assure me that that sacrifice would have worked. I'm not fully convinced. I'm difficult to convince. And that's okay. So um, yeah, that was an interesting game. I hope we all enjoyed that together, and the moral of the story is, uh, defend your king. Don't let this happen to you, or if you're going to attack, attack correctly. So, I hope that we all learned something from this. I hope I've learned something from it anyway, so yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.